Welcome to the final episode of our Rangers of a Broken World series, everyone. This series, we welcomed Cat McDonald to join us to learn all about this brand new post-apocalyptic game that is currently playtesting through Evil Hat. In today's episode, we finish our discussion series and hear all about the remarkable fanfic about this amazing trio. But before we get to that, here's what to expect in our calls to action. Join us here after the show to hear about the latest one-shot network news, including yet another brand new show being welcomed to our network. What am I rolling? We'll also have information about our Patreon as well as our patron thank yous. Yep, with all of that out of the way, enjoy the show, everyone. episode of Character Creation Cast. We learned a bit more about Kat's origin story and got into some great discussion about how the character creation went in this series. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. And this gets us to uh, one of the questions I love to ask designers a lot um, because uh, it makes them think sometimes. Um, what do you think is one of the biggest flaws of character creation in this system? And what is your favorite part? I do truly know the answer to this already. You can't stump me. And that's because one of my dear play testers, Kathleen, that's also Kathleen, um, is one of my dear play testers, Kathleen, pointed out to me that character creation in this game is very front loaded, which means that you have to develop an identity for your character much sooner in this game than you mm. do other games, even games in a similar style. Mm -hmm. You do kind of have to delve into your character's interiority before you've had a chance to play them, which is not always where that goes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are like, for example, when we talked about answering the questions. Yeah. And and Amelia, your response was like, I am not prepared for that yet. <laughs> like, I yeah. don't know who this person is. <laughs> and so and that's like normal and valid. And so admittedly, it does require you to get into your character's interiority without having played them first, which is not where most people are used to encountering that part of the process. Mm -hmm. So it can be daunting. That's part of why I tried to mitigate that by putting the random tables in. Mm hmm. And also by just making it very clear when things are optional and when things are just, um, yeah, when things are optional, when things are take it or leave it, when like you've got a list and you can choose all or none or as many as you want so that players don't feel like, oh, these questions are a mandatory part and I'm getting walled by it because I don't know who this person is. Like the questions are optional. Yeah. I do feel mm -hmm. like, especially with some of those questions and like the, you know, you may have whatever, um, a lot of them were, were very open-ended too. And so some of them, we went into some real specificity, but then like we got to the one um, where I have a weapon that I'm very attached to. And I very clearly said, like, I would need to play to find out more about yeah. this. But it is a thing that I know, like, my character does have a weapon that I'm attached to. I haven't decided right. what that weapon is, why I'm particularly attached to it, whatever. Um, so I did feel mm -hmm. like, even though some of that was front loaded, some of it really did just give me like, hey, this is a thing to watch out for as you play, okay. which I, I feel good about. Um, going into a game because sometimes you create your character and it is a little bit awkward going into it because you're like I don't even know what direction I'm headed. Yeah, that's yeah. like I've got that's some my stats, purse. I I've got some you. personality, yeah. but I don't know how I interact with everything yet. And I like mm -hmm. that for me, it was like okay, here's a thing that like when you're lost or confused or don't know what you're doing, you can start to think about this. You know, this is a thing that mm -hmm. my character could be doing. <laughs> Yeah, like key is very much like these are the things that motivate your character and they're fully free form, which means 
like that that's probably the most important random table I put in there because fully free form can be daunting for people. I get yes. that. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I also think that having them day one of your character is a really great way to be like, okay, what motivates my character? I'm looking mm-hmm. at the list, pride. My character yeah. takes pride in his work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so an opportunity to maybe show off a gem that he had set beautifully or an opportunity to um work on a particularly complex crystal structure and cut it Mm -hmm. in a Mm -hmm. way that perfectly shows off its beauty would um would be something this character would be interested in doing because it's on the key right Mm -hmm. but i think having those random tables really said like you know, because like Ryan just kind of went through and did like a pick and choose out of these options. I went through and rolled and the way I rolled was perfect. I loved it. But I definitely could have gone through and been like, oh, I, you know, I got this word, but I think a better word would have been, yeah, you know, the, and like a mm-hmm. little free association from there too. So it felt like you had a lot of options. So it, it, it was as open-ended as you wanted. Yeah. So I guess mm-hmm. my answer is that the open-endedness and the very introspective nature of it is its biggest flaw that I have put a lot of effort into trying to provide comfortable on-ramps to, mm-hmm. to minimize player discomfort with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I think the thing we come across with this question a lot too is this is a flaw if it's not what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. And you know, because oh, I think that there is a place though, for, you know, a game that really <laughs> does front load some of that stuff, because it means then when you go into the game, you know who you are and you don't have that sort of awkward starting out phase. Um, yeah. But mm-hmm. if you're, you know, much more of a play to find out kind of person, maybe it isn't for you. But on the other hand, I think that there are a lot of opportunities built in to say, OK, I know about this thing. But there are also lots of blank spaces that I don't know about. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I do also think that if it's not your thing, ev- everything is flawed. Well, right. If it's and not I, your I, thing. Not everything is for everyone, <laughs> nor should exactly. it be. Like, because if everything is for everyone, sometimes it's also for no one. That's a whole other mm-hmm. thing. That's why we don't play everything in 5e. That's why we don't play everything in a generic build your own kind of system. It is the reason that people keep making games and finding new ways to solve things because Mm -hmm. this is something that I personally want. It's okay if not everybody wants it. There's something out there for you. You know? Exactly. So that's, um, yeah, it's, I I definitely think that like that. It's a, I think it's it's a very valid criticism. Yeah. Yeah. Even people who like like mid crunch, Narrative forward, but not fully narrative front Mm -hmm. games, games that like, like games like this one, even people who like this are sometimes much more toward an improv and are less comfortable front loading interiority stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like, even if this game is your taste, Mm -hmm. that is an entry hazard that Mm -hmm. hopefully the on-ramp helps people with. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think um I think my answer to the best part might honestly be the classes because I don't think I've ever described the classes to someone and had them not respond by getting very excited about at least one. They mm-hmm. it, it is such a wide variety and I know I keep using this word of like evocative, but they are. It's Yay. such a wide variety of things that immediately you both know what it is. And want to figure out what it is. At the same I'm time. so glad. I truly am. And yeah, every time I just, every time somebody reads them, they'll respond to me just like, oh my God, the infiltrator. Mm-hmm. Or they'll be like, oh, I want to play a navigator right now. Like it's like, like oh, like, that's the one. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Like people will, will see them and they'll get excited about something. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, so I, I genuinely, that's the part that brings me the most joy. I love them. Tracker mm-hmm. is my, my personal, like, my infant baby um legionnaire is also my infant baby because i too am occasionally depressed mm-hmm. but, <laughs> and from a very cold place so yeah we know we know about that here in wisconsin yeah <laughs> if you look at the if you look at the media ins- uh, if you look at the inspirations i did write living with mental illness and living in canada as 
Yeah. <laughs> As inspirations. And I, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. Yep. It's perfectly reasonable. And Absolutely. I know about being depressed in the cold. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> I also think that there was, because there's such variety between them, there were certainly multiple ones that I could see myself playing. But I also feel like, again, because of that personality and, you know, the amount of choices you have within each one, they all have a lot of replayability that mm -hmm. you could go in, you could pick the same class and have a totally different character. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've definitely seen some very different arcanists from this one. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Palladian's a special boy. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. My baby. Mm -hmm. Perfect, honestly, in every way. This is our, our favorite section. Um, we discuss our stories. We talk about what would happen if we played the game, which we don't. Um, we refer to this as our fanfic section, where yeah. we just like to talk about what might happen if we played with these adorable okay. cuties well mm -hmm. hmm. i think we should start like what kind of problem is this weird group of people trying to to manage here i'd like to do something in a big dockside town like stageport like a big dockside mm. city because that gives like dockside sailor stuff for nebula to do mm -hmm. and wealthy mm -hmm. people for mm -hmm. morrigan to make clothing for yeah, it's a, a big and trading oh, yeah. hub and ooh, so many fabrics There'd be so many Enough fabrics. people that yeah. Palladian is just like, can I leave this place? Mm -hmm. And the two of you will be like, not yet. We have a mission. And Palladian will be like, can I leave now? <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but when will that be done? And is it soon? Yeah. Can I leave now? <laughs> is it like five more minutes or? Yeah. So like, something in something in Stageport, something like in a in a crowded dockside city that has like nobility in it. Mm-hmm. And there's there's inequality in Stageport. There's it's the largest government in Amilta currently is the municipal government of the city of Stageport. So if we wanted to engage in those political questions of what kind of world is going to be rebuilt after the apocalypse, Stageport is mm. also a good place to get into that. I do cool. like that. I do like meddling in political mm. affairs. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I could see a potential coup. If we wanted, mm -hmm. you know, the I do mayor think it would being overthrown. I do think it would probably involve going to a masquerade ball of some sort. Yeah, yeah. Because that feels yeah. really important that we would have some fashion montages because every game needs some fashion montages. And fashion then, montage. you know, okay. Um, yeah. You know, some somebody going on a date or something is also extremely important. A hundred percent. I know. I know. My character is probably the like uh, hopeless romantic sort mm. of type. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Are you trying to and, set and everybody up, or are you trying to like look for love? She's constantly looking for love and constantly, accidentally breaking hearts. Mm. <laughs> accidentally. Oh, yeah. I love it. Accidentally, she doesn't mean to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think. The the noble that we're having this mask masquerade ball at their place has some gorgeous marble statues in their courtyard. Mm. Mm -hmm. And Baladian is just not at all at the party mm. and is out in the courtyard. And maybe like due to their high sensitivity, notices some shady dealings in the courtyard. Mm. People who Are like didn't those... know they were there. Are some of those While they were just admiring too. the marble that the statues were made of. Mm. I would love a conspiracy of uh, a like rival faction that is trying to like harness one of the supernatural threats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To try to leverage power within the city. Oh, mm. I did. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe we could do something like because there's a uh, there's a noble demon in stage port um, that I told a story about on Sword of Symphonies and something similar would really work here is that the Bell Tower Baroness, um, people would indulge her obsession and they would make deals for her to do like assassinations. Mm. And she has her obsession. She literally did not really have a choice. Mm. And so like, mm. it might be, it might be something like that where somebody is like, 
leveraging the obsession of a noble demon in order to carry out their goals. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, what's a good... I love noble demons. I love them because, first of all, I'm a big, like, occult nerd. And second of all, noble demons are meant to represent, like, royalty. So mm. they're they're impossibly powerful. They have godlike power, but they're also, like, you are an insect to them and they do not care. Yeah. Right. They have wishes that are fully beyond you to understand. Mm-hmm. Give it to them or perish. Right. They don't care. Yeah. Um, I, I really love the idea of that being sort of a like a key element in this power struggle that's going on in this city Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely i I do love some good eldric nonsense Mm -hmm. as well yeah yeah Yeah. what is this what is this demon obsessed okay now my question is which is the cart and which is the horse right is the is the coup de ta, de ta the, is the coup being done in order to obtain something for the demon or is the demon helping in order to achieve the coup hmm. i think they the coup is thinking that the demon is helping to achieve the coup but i but i want to say it's the other really way around what's happening like the demon has some okay. ulterior motive the coup is a way to get that yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I okay. think the goal here then also becomes to uncover like what is this like what does this demon want that I the coup would fulfill. Yes. I have, have a an pitch. idea. I have a pitch. Okay. Maybe yeah. the demon's obsession is dominion. Mm. It's territory. Yes. Mm-hmm. And somehow this demon is bound so that it cannot leave the bounds of the city of Stageport. Ah. Oh. Which means it is helping these expansionistic military types try their coup d'etat in the hopes that they will expand the city's territory and thus give the demon more dominion oh Oh, yeah yeah i like that that makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. and so like they don't know that they're the the, they are tools for the demon to basically travel further right yeah right and all they see is like oh you would let me be in charge so yeah and they they have not asked why the demon is helping them. Right. Or maybe the demon has lied to them fully. Yeah. And just been like, oh, yeah, I'm obsessed with old coins. Bring me old coins and I'll help you with your whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the team, demons are notoriously honest and truthful. Notoriously trustworthy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Absolutely. So <laughs> is it is it our group's... Uh, purpose here then to stop this plot i don't think the plot is our problem necessarily but i do think that the conspirators have been like disappearing people with the demon's power yeah, yeah. well and i and, think like, the expansion would probably hurt like villages and things around it too yeah you know? mm-hmm. so maybe we have because i think Baladian is just like look if they want to do their politics they want to do their politics i truly do not know or care Mm-hmm. But using a demon to kill people can't not have great. that. Absolutely yeah. can't have that. No. I don't care yeah, what side you're on. You end? can't do right. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And maybe Morrigan has a different approach to it because Morrigan has a better view of politics than Baladian does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also, so, if, you know, the, the ul- ulterior motive of those politics is really just take over everything. That doesn't end well mm-hmm. for anybody because you're going to end up with a dictatorship. Yeah. And truly, the other thing is that that's where horrors come from, because they're the world's memory of trauma, including the world's memory of war. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right. So, like, the creatures that you fought in the labyrinth were the mm-hmm. were the scars left by wars before the cataclysm. Right. Well, so and all you of know, these fallen behind me are dead soldiers for the most part, too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I generally think the goal would be to avoid more of that. Exactly. War Mm -hmm. of people killing each other is something that you are intimately familiar with the consequences of, maybe more than anyone else. Yeah. 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 I mean, and I think we would all potentially have very different reasons for wanting to do this. And there there is also the potential um, for some good quality intra-party conflict if we don't necessarily agree on what the outcome should be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that's, that's always a lot of fun to play out, too. But I also, I think this is if a there's good... a masquerade, yes, mm-hmm. like 
I, I my character's got to sing at some point oh, at, yes. the, Obviously. at the ball, yeah. right? For sure. Um, and and it's got to be as a distraction so you two can go do shenanigan hero shenanigans of some sort. Right, got to be a distraction. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just trying to think now. Like, I think the um, I wanna I wanna say the title because I usually give them titles. I kind of mm-hmm. want to say the Grand General. The Grand General of Shattered Stone is what mm. I'm going to call this noble demon. I think that's very good. And maybe mm-hmm. he inhabits like a a ruined a ruined building that like weird things happen in there. No one has ever restored it. He doesn't want anyone to restore it. Mm-hmm. And they have little servants they make which are the lesser demons like Dendra. So maybe no, I kind of want to say that they're just like um they look just like empty suits of armor, the the lesser demons of the, oh, yeah. of the great general, of the grand general. I love it. I love it. I, just I like feel like that's something that like would be around and you know, I think there's a point too where like people are like scrambling to kind of collect them, which is essentially mm-hmm. spreading these lesser demons around too. Yeah. Yep. And they're also that also means that we could have one or two of them as messengers from the general at mm-hmm. the masquerade ball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And people would just be like, oh, there's a figure in full armor. Yeah. Yeah. But it's empty. There's nothing in there. Right. Oh, Which so you good. would notice oh, being incredibly sensitive to these things. You'd yeah. Be like, being, that being doesn't walk sensitive quite right. And, and demon knowing. It's just like, oh. Yeah. Like, oh, crap. I also have a wicked advisor. So Dendra's Dendra has the ability to just be like, "That's a demon, huh?" Yeah, check it, check it out. Yeah. That's a that's a lesser demon. <laughs> I know these takes things. one to know one. Uh-huh. Takes one to know one. Jerk. <laughs> yeah, bully. And you're like, quiet. Don't say that out loud. I do not want to approach this stranger in armor. Right. <laughs> I do not want that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would like to point out that we all have the best costumes there. Yeah. Meanwhile, Nebula's like sitting over here, striking up a conversation with an empty suit of armor, just Mm -hmm. like putting on the charm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Totally oblivious. The strong, silent type. Wow. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Totally willing to listen to all your stories. You love a good listener. Uh Uh-huh. Absolutely. (laughs) No, no, no. No, Nebula. That's terrible. And like the lady is just like, um, uh, um, (laughs) I'm getting to the good part. um, Hold on a second. All right. Okay. Yeah, you cannot interrupt Nebula when she's on a roll. No, no, fully does not have the heart to interrupt Nebula. I've got like a, like a side audience Mm -hmm. just like (laughs) hanging on to the story. And the yep. more people arrive, the more Baladian's like, oh, I cannot say it in front of all these people. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, the moment's no. passed. <laughs> uh-huh. um, costume wise. Hmm. I mean, the question is, is it just like fancy, fancy dress and masks or is it like costume? I think it might be fancy dress and masks. Mm-hmm. Like really I think ornate. Palladians, but but even at fancy dress with a mask, you've got a theme, right? Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, at least yeah, like a vibe. I think I feel like we're going for a sort of ethereal, like forest yeah. goddess kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I do like Very like springtime. nature, forest, uh, yeah. woodland creature sort of mm-hmm. uh, theme. Yeah. Or so. I'm yeah. feeling like very like fairy queen kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking of of Baladians just being like bear themed. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. Just like having like a fur cloak and like muted. Baladian will insist on muted colors, does not yeah. want to stand out, but will have mm-hmm. like cute little teddy bear ears on yes. his mask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. We'll we'll put I you know, in some khakis. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, this will be like the first event that we would see Nebula in a full like dress, mm-hmm. like oh. full beautiful flowing I want gown. Yours to be very like woven tapestry kind of a thing yeah, yeah, with yeah. like Ooh. very ornate embroidery that like tells a story. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's um, what I love that. 
Because <laughs> I'm also thinking like uh, vines would mm-hmm. be kind of like part of the motif. Oh yeah, and, for sure. Uh, and, and maybe like the mask would be like a like a something like uh, I don't know, like a like a deer with antlers or something like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Something very yeah, like grandiose that sticks of. out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I feel like the story of the embroider in the back is sort of like. A, a very like creationist myth, like pre-apocalypse, old, 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 old. Oh yeah, creation yeah, myth. Ancient myths. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely a Morrigan original. Yeah, I think uh, it has strong just, Celtic vibes. Look. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. My mm-hmm. my baby is not beating the cute allegations with this no. one. No, with the no. with the teddy bear mask, not yeah. beating the cute app. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> trying trying to fit in. No, but I would really like if you had your little crystal with your demon in it and we made it look like a pot of honey. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I'd like that very much. I'm full of ideas. That's beautiful. (laughs) That's so cute. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like whatever I'm wearing is like sort of like a shimmery kind of flowy fabric, but toward the bottom it like is made to look like smoke kind of ethereal like it has elegant. a lot of movement to it yes mm. mm-hmm. so that it looks like a combination of being like wet but also kind of smoky yeah mm-hmm. and all Baladian wants to do is look at these marble statues and people are like you are so cute and Baladian is yeah. like okay like maybe I should have <laughs> dressed as a statue that would have been better the slightly <laughs> pink uh, uh veins in in this marble uh are actually caused by uh, iron deposits. Market is coming from the the south central coast. Hello. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. And they just like turn. They're like, I'm gonna go back to the buffet. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you truly, truly, people like people truly do need to just. Not. And then I think you figure <laughs> out. Like he figures out after a while. Like if I keep talking about rocks, people go away. <laughs> yeah. So like this is really a win win for him. <laughs> Yeah, Mm -hmm. I get to talk about rocks and people who aren't interested in talking about rocks with me will leave. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's a perfect night for you. Everybody's having a great time, except for that whole stopping a coup demon thing. We do have to stop them is the thing. We do have to stop them. Yeah, but I'd like to wait until they bring the desserts out, if possible. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Just want to get a slice of that cake. It looks pretty good. Hey. Oh, I would love cake. cake. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, we stop a demon, we can have some cake, okay? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay. Cake is for winners. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I don't know exactly how this works. I love this group so much. I I do love them. Oh, my goodness. They're adorable. But yeah, I do think like while Baladians outside, they hear the, um, they overhear a discussion between a conspirator. Maybe they overhear one of the conspirators giving orders to one of the the empty suits of armor. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. they're like, "Oh no, that's that's demon stuff. I know demon stuff. I know mm-hmm. all about demon stuff. That's it." Uh oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I have to tell the others. Yeah. Which yep. means I and that's where inside. you catch me having the conversation with, with the suit of yeah. armor. Yeah. With I one think, of the suits. I think, like in yep. the meantime, you know, like. I'm sort of going around, like, figuring out who's important, talking to people that are important, you know, mm. getting the background information mm-hmm. on who's who. And, mm. you know, we'll combine the politics, fashion, tactics situation, the ability to mm-hmm. put all these pieces yeah. together. Oh, I really like these kids. I, I love yeah. these babies. They're very good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's, you know, we've we've set up one really strong scenario here, but I think with this group, there's so much possibility because it is just a little bit of everything. Yes. Maybe we end up in the Coral Coast and we're in the lava tunnels and you see an unexpectedly uh, animated Baladian explaining the, <laughs> the igneous and metamorphic rocks <laughs> right. that you can find you can in these lava tunnels. You can see how all of the different layers uh-huh. have built up over time. <laughs> Yep. yep. And it's like, we are trying to not become deceased. Mm-hmm. And Baladian's like, oh, I know. Don't worry. We won't become deceased, but I need you to look at this here. You see that big dark crystal? And it's like, <laughs> right. Yeah. But we have to keep mm-hmm. going or it's going to get too hot. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Truly. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yay. 
Oh, uh, well, let's uh, get into the final segment, our advancement discussion, uh, where we can go ahead and take it up a level. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. In this segment, we cover character advancement, um, both uh, mechanically and then kind of narratively. I did notice that there were different, um, is it chapters or what What were they called? Uh, seasons. Seasons. Yeah. Yep. So can you tell us a little bit about how that works? Oh, yeah. One thing that we didn't do because it's tied to advancement is lesson. Lesson is kind of the, it's what your, it's what your character needs to learn. It's the lesson they need to learn to grow as a person. And this is very mutable. It's not set in stone. It's mostly a signal to your GM about what you want your character's story to look like. Mm. Because when every character has had their own story and the GM has told a little like capstone story, that's one season. Mm. So when that season is over, everyone gets to take a new ability and take some new skills depending on what they did during those stories. Okay. So at the end of a character arc, everyone gets to take one new skill. And the person whose arc it is also gets to increase one of their facets. And then when everyone has done this, then we go up a season. And you could take any ability that is your season or lower on your list. Oh, nice. So I've written five seasons worth of abilities, but you can double up and you can go back and take abilities from older levels as much as you want. Very nice. Are are you capped at five then or can you just keep going? You can just keep going, but I've written abilities up to five. So you would, when you do level six, you just have to take another ability somewhere between one and five. That's beautiful. Yeah, I did not want a cap. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That's so good. I, I'm wondering, um, would we be able to think of uh, some some quick uh, lessons for each of these characters? I mean, I'm open to that. Like, what would you want know season where to start. one lessons yeah. to be? I think my season one lesson for Baladian is that you're not as different as you think. Mm. I think Baladian's mm. anxious about people because they think other people don't understand. Well, c- you know what? They he. Let's go. They he at this point. I've been using them interchangeably. <laughs> they think other people won't understand them. They think they don't understand other people. Other people don't understand them. But I think their lesson would be actually a lot of that is your barrier that you need to challenge and overcome and that you mm. can form connections with people. Yeah. I like that. Um for nebula what's the most important function is to tell the gm what kind of story you're interested in telling about this character yeah Yeah. i mean and i feel like for me the the most important thing would be finding a balance between the living and the dead um Mm. and not being so focused on one that you let go of the other Mm -hmm. Mm. can i make a pitch for nebula sure Maybe a pitch about like um, a pitch about non-romantic love because Nebula is such a romantic Ooh. that maybe just like the world is full of different kinds of love. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Because I my my initial thought was like she's looking for that romantic love mm-hmm. and she doesn't recognize it when she sees it. Mm. So, like, people fall for her and she doesn't think it's a romantic love that people are feeling for her. And she's trying to figure out that. So, yeah, I think, like... I think learning to um, see love in all its forms. Yeah, learning to see love in all its forms and learning to understand what forms of love there are Mm -hmm. would be a a fantastic lesson for Nebula. I really like that. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it's um it kind of reminds me of um of uh Terra's thing in Final Fantasy VI, mm. where like in the world of ruin, like the love she finds is the love of these children that depend on her and is like a, mm-hmm. a familial love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just absolutely I think it's such a beautiful story for her and I love it very much. So mm-hmm. yeah, maybe that's where we're at. Uh, well that's my pitch anyway. Is yeah. like there are many different kinds of love in the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm all for that. I think that's perfect. 
fantastic lessons. Yay. Yeah. So it sounds like the the sort of narrative growth and and I always really like when this is the case is that the narrative growth and the mechanical enhancements happen together. And yeah, mm-hmm. I I like it better that way. Mm-hmm. I, I always hate when you get stuff that you're like, this has nothing to do with what my character just went through. <laughs> and that's also why, like, like, for example, if we're telling Morrigan's story about balancing the living and the dead, mm-hmm. maybe Morrigan learns to roll with things a little bit more. Right. And adds a point of adaptability. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. maybe uh, like Baladian and Nebula aren't going to be adding stats, but they do get to add a skill. Mm hmm. So, like, I might add, say, melee weapons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I might learn how to use a sword over the course of this story. Right. So yeah, I, yeah. I did want it to be very tied with experiences, not as, like, points, but as things you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. That was kind of very front of mind for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, I, th- I think that uh, it, it's a very straightforward advancement system. Um, once you get your lessons learned, then make new lessons and mm-hmm. advance your characters. Yeah. you there's The world is full of things to learn. Yeah. I, I do like that you can define those lessons later as well through play because it, it definitely does take a knowing of where your character's at and where you want to see your character story go. Yeah. Uh, to create those sorts of lessons. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. And yeah, the most important thing really that lesson does is is a form of communication between player and GM. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can be just like, hey, GM, I actually feel like look before you leap is something my character doesn't need to learn right now. Maybe it leads to learn a story about working together with others better. Yeah. yeah. Let's do that instead. Yeah. Well, and it just ensures that you're getting out of the game like the kind of growth that you want to to play with you know the kinds of stories that you want to tell about your own character exactly 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 Mm -hmm. and yeah it gives you story beats to play for lesson for my character Mm -hmm. would be like sharing the spotlight or something like that. i was gonna suggest that as your first (laughs) one of like learn when to listen (laughs) yeah i don't i don't always have to be the main protagonist you fully don't. Sounds fake, but okay. <laughs> Amazing. Well, uh, before we end the series, Kat, is there anything else you want to say about uh, Rangers of a Broken World before we head out? Um, I guess that, like, yeah, if you're listening to this as it comes out, then there's still time for you to get in on that open play test. Get your name in the manual as a playtester and get your voice heard in the process. If not, you can look forward to a shiny manual coming out from our friends at Evil Hat. And I hope very much that you do. If you're mm-hmm. curious about the kinds of stories this game is built to tell, you can check out Sword of Symphonies. It's been running for quite a while and we're on a bit of a hiatus right now. But if you want to hear the story set in this game and in this world, there's a whole podcast for you. Absolutely. Yeah, if you like what you're here, here. Uh, have we got news for you? <laughs> Do you want to hear people actually <laughs> play the game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Kat, thank you so much for joining us to talk about Rangers of Broken World. This was fantastic. I had, I had so much fun. fun. I had so much fun. This was great. This was so yeah. good. <laughs> can you go ahead and remind everyone where they can find you online and the sorts of things you have going on? Well, I um I love to write role playing games. Uh, you can find them at peachgardengames.com or peachgardengames.itch.io. It says what sort of things you're working on right now. I'm working on a an upsettingly Shin Megami Tensei inspired game called Rebirth Roulette. Um, because yeah. I love SMT. I'm a degenerate like that. Um, <laughs> you can find me on the podcast Sword of Symphonies, where I am the host king, and my good cool friends play test this game. Or you can listen to Roar to Heaven, where different cool friends played a different game and were punished for it. <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on Busky at Catling Gun, that's C-A-T-L-I-N-G Gun. Pew, 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 pew. And uh, <laughs> you can find this game's open play test at evilh.at slash rangers dash playtest. That's awesome. This was so much fun. Kat, thank you so 
thank you, thank you for sitting down with us. I had a blast. I hope you enjoyed I, it. Mm-hmm. I had a blast. You're not the boss of me. Okay. No, you you do whatever you want. <laughs> um, and thank you to everyone for tuning in. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I think that the thing this episode brings to light is something that honestly I'm surprised we don't talk about more on our show, which is the importance of capes yeah. and fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we've talked about it some, but I think I think we really emphasized it in this episode, and it's something that we really should talk about more on this show is the importance of fashion in role playing games. It's and I'm true. glad we really got to touch on it this episode. Yeah, it was nice. A uh, lot of really good story possibilities for these mm-hmm. characters yeah. and I re- really liked the uh the, the scenario that we had kind of come up with for what we could potentially tackle as a group yes I loved the empty suits of armor yeah, like, yeah, yeah. the empty suits of armor were f- fantastic uh the going to a masquerade mm-hmm. fantastic oh, I love a good masquerade yeah 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 and uh, and getting like brand new clothes from your character, mm-hmm. just uh, so many good things going yes. on. Yeah, I mean, and obviously we also have a lot of we had a lot of really good discussion about design and all of that kind of stuff. But I think we yeah, can yeah. all agree that the most important part was <laughs> the discussion <laughs> the of the masquerade and how we were all going to do terribly when it came to social things at this. Yeah. <laughs> At this masquerade. Um, uh, but n- I not mean, all I would be a good distraction at the very least. You would. You but, would. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, we would, be, would, we would manage. Um, yeah. I don't know how inconspicuous we would be. <laughs> but we would have fun. And I think We'd that's really fun. what it's about. That is what it's about. <laughs> Having fun stopping demons. Right. Right. Except yeah. the ones that are our friends. Exactly. Right. Right. <laughs> No, I really, I'm I'm glad we got to showcase this game. I know we've had a lot of people over the last couple of weeks point out how cool it sounds. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm really glad that we got to have Kat join us and that we, we got to make this little fan fiction especially. It was Absolutely, a good, good time. yeah. Super excited that Kat was able to join us virtually last minute yes, and yeah. uh, give us a great series for the month. So it was fantastic. Uh, kudos to Kat for that. Yes, and kudos to Kat for making this game. I know, exactly. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, before we let everyone go for the day, though, we have, as usual, our calls to action. Mm-hmm. We got uh, another big one today. We've got, uh, first up, in exciting one-shot network news, we have yet another new show joining us as of yesterday from the, the release of this episode. Uh, after Game Woven and Roleplay Retcon joined us in the last couple of weeks, uh, What Am I Rolling is a show where the show's game master, Fiona, takes a brand new group of players and runs them through a one-shot adventure, testing out a different RPG game style or system every single month. And it turns out that they are just a single month younger than Character Creation Cast, which was a fascinating tidbit that I found. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. This is another fine addition to the OneShot Network, and you can find out a lot more about them over on OneShotPodcast.com, and you can check out their feed there. Uh, Believe it or not, there is even more news coming uh, from the network later this month, as well as a special announcement from us coming soon as well so stay right here to get all the latest information and obviously by later this month we mean we mean in, next month in the yeah month of october because later this See, month would that be this never month ends today. <laughs> today yeah <laughs> <laughs> um we would mean later in the 30 day period you know exactly. not calendar month just to clarify <laughs> just for to anybody clarify. waiting up until midnight on Monday, like uh-huh. they said later in the month. <laughs> oh, no. No, we met October. Mm-hmm. Um, if you like what we're doing and want to support the show, you can head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash character creation cast and sign up for any of our basic tiers for free um, as a free trial. Each level has a ton of great rewards associated with it. We have exclusive stickers, custom dice, exclusive 
bonus episodes from time to time, as well as chit chats among other great rewards. We also have bonus outtakes for our patrons, um, even the free ones. And now is a great time to sign up and help us out with this process. Absolutely. Uh, we also like to thank all of our patrons personally, every single episode. Uh, all of you mean the absolute world to us. Uh, so we are going to get this started. And as you know, we'll start with uh, DJG, a.k.a. Tigranosaurus, Eric Bonson, Daryl Holiday II. We're so glad to have you back in us. Thank you. Thank you to Shadim Cabal, the Shyest Barbarian, and Benjamin Sweeney. Your support brings us so much joy. Thanks, Lorcan McGinnis, Rob Fletcher, and Kevin Brown. So glad to have you backing us. We're glad to have Tentacle Duck, John Adamus, and A3 Sketchpad. Thank you for supporting us. Cold McCallum, Carlos Salazar, and Eric S. Thank you all so much. We are glad to have you here, Ian Popmeyer, Sorogoth, and Liam G. Thank you for supporting us. Thanks, Brian Colm, Garden GM, and Tanglefoot. So glad to have you back in us as well. Thanks, Blue Kryptonite, Danny, and No Goals Trainer. We are really glad to have you here. Liam Murray, Kenning, and Brian Kurtz, thank you all so very much. Mark E. Fair and Drew Owen, thanks for your support. And thank you to all of our future patrons. Your support means the absolute world to us. Every bit of support here helps tremendously, and we are incredibly grateful to all of you. If you are already supporting the Patreon or can't afford to do so right now and still want to show your support for the show, the next best way to do so is to leave a review on places like Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, or even Facebook. I also hear Spotify is allowing episode comments, so you can head over to Spotify and drop a comment on your favorite uh, episode if you want, and we'll probably be able to read it. That is all we have for today's episode. Until next time, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Drink some water. Register to vote. And hey. keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter and Blue Sky at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter and Blue Sky at Lord Neptune or online at LordNeptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter and Blue Sky at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, exclusive merch, and much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.